Recently, my friend Carissa Wiley came out with a brand new birthday release and you can make much more than just birthday cards with it. Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Today I'm jumping into a new collection called It's My Party and this is an amazing release because I love making birthday cards but there's tons of versatility in it so I'm also going to share how to make some summer themed cards and one with a fun party twist. I'll have everything I used in today's video listed and linked down below and using those links helps support me so I really appreciate it. Now without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I've got quite a bit of the products from this release here. Of course, yours will come in gorgeous packaging and let's jump right into creating some beautiful cards with it. All right, so let's start off with a birthday card. So I'm gonna jump right into the Party Balloon Garland stamp set and the coordinating stencil to do some stamping and coloring. I'm gonna start off with this big balloon garland. I think this is so creative. I've never seen a balloon stamp that looks like this. And then I'm gonna stamp this down using my Misty stamping tool. So we'll place in my piece of Starkwood cardstock here, and then we'll place down the balloon garland, line it up, and then we'll stamp it right down. Now I'm gonna do some heat embossing, so I'm gonna just throw down a little bit of anti-static powder tool to make sure this doesn't stick where we don't want it to. And then I want a nice jet black image, so I'm gonna go in using a bit of VersaFine Clear ink and ink all of this up. And this is gonna give us a really great crisp stamped impression. And then we'll place this right over and stamp it down. And the reason I'm using this in my Misty is because I think it sort of interlocks. So the awesome part is I can just rotate it, super simple to do, and then I'll go right back in with my ink and I'm pretty sure it's going to sort of fill in the background pattern then. So we'll stamp this down again and yeah, that lines up perfectly to create sort of a garland all around the card. So I like that you can do both to create a full background or you can just do one end to do sort of a little arch. Super cool and great design work on that. And then when it comes to that VersaFine Clear ink, it takes a little bit longer to dry. So I'm just gonna throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder over all the ink. And this is going to set it in place but also give it a nice shine as well. So I'll tap off any of the excess and then we'll heat this until it's clear and shiny. And once that's done, we've got a nice black image that has a great shine to it. To do my stenciling, I'm gonna go into the stamp wheel because this has that photopolymer mat, which is nice and sticky for stenciling. So I'm just gonna go lay this down onto my surface. It's gonna stick down really nicely onto there. And then we'll grab the coordinating stencil set. So this has stencils to do the balloon layers, but it also has a bunch of sentiments as well, which I think is really awesome. So you can do the balloons, but then it's got the versatility that you can do lots of different sentiments to go along with them. All right, so starting off with the first layer, I'm going to line it up with the balloons. And then you're just gonna take any excess of the stencil and just stick it right down into this mat, which should kind of hold it in place as we do our stenciling. I'm gonna do some blues and greens and keep it pretty masculine. So starting off with a bit of clear skies and I'll just go in with my foam domed blending tools and just simply and really easily blend these balloons in. And you could tape off the sentiments if you want to make sure you don't get any ink on them, but it's pretty easy to avoid them and there that colors in the balloon super easily. I'm gonna then flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Lift that off and there we've got it colored in. Then we'll bring in the second layer stencil and it lines up with these balloons really easily. Here I'm gonna go in with Psyche, which is this kind of yellowish green color. It's a really bright lime green. And then go in and blend this out with our domed foam blending tools again to color the balloons in. And like this, once you get the hang of it, it's a super quick and easy process. I could see doing a couple of these cards because the stencil makes it so easy to just color in these balloons. And we'll go in with a third layer. Here we'll go in with a mid-tone blue called No Diving. So also by changing up the different color schemes, you can make it a little bit more masculine or feminine. Here I'm going in with just blues and greens. So I'm keeping it fairly masculine and this is a great set that you could use for guys or girls. I know you guys are always on the hunt for more masculine card ideas. And just something as simple as changing up the color scheme makes it a lot more masculine. And then finally, I'll go in with the fourth layer, line this up, and then we'll go in using Later Gator, which is a mid-tone green color to blend this in super easily. Perfect. Now you could totally just leave this. I think it looks beautiful as it is, but I'm gonna go in using some solar paste in the color Crocodile Tears and Beluga because I wanna add a little bit of shine to these balloons. So I'm just gonna go into these pastes using a palette knife and just lift out some of the color. So I'll take some of that Beluga and just lay it onto a piece of plastic on the side to create sort of a palette. And just a thin layer is all you really want. Then I'll put any of the excess right back into the jar. And then I'll go into Crocodile Tears, which is the more minty green color. And again, just take a little bit and spread it pretty thin to a piece of plastic on the side. 
We'll put any of the excess right back into the jar. And then we're able to go back in with our stencils, lay it right over top. So right back into that darker blue layer. And I'm gonna go in using a foam blending tool and just go right into, here I'm gonna use the green color. You could use the blue color if you want more of a tone on tone shine, but I want when you shift it in the light for it to sort of turn that green color. You don't want too much on your blending tool, just enough to cover the surface of it. And then I'll go right in and blend this over top of that blue to create a really nice shine. Then we'll lift this right off and it's made those nice and shiny. Lay it right back over top of the blue and go into the green and then blend it on this side as well. And we'll lift this off and we got a beautiful effect. Now before I go in with the next color, I want to dry this really quickly. And because we've applied it so thin, it dries really quite easily. A couple seconds with the heat tool and about a minute or so if you let it dry on its own. And then once that's nice and dry, you get that beautiful shine over top of the blue. And you can see it sort of shifts to that green color, which is so unique with the solar paste. I love how it looks. So I can place this right back down onto the surface then. And here I'm gonna go in using the beluga paste. So just using that same blending tool is totally fine. I'll apply a thin amount to the blending tool and then I'll go right over top of the surface and blend this over top of those green balloons. And it sort of gives a color shifting effect then. Because on the green ones, you're gonna see a little bit of blue when you tilt it in the light. And on those blue balloons, you're gonna see a little bit of green. We'll lift this off, super easy. I got a little bit in the center there which we can just wipe off with our finger. And then again, we'll rotate it and then I'll go on this side and use a little bit of that beluga paste all the way across the surface as well. Lift it off. So when you're looking at it sort of straight on, you get all the bold colors. And then when you tilt it in the light, you get those beautiful color shifting effects and it sort of changes to the opposite color, which I think is just gorgeous. And it gives it the shine that a regular balloon would have. Now when it comes to cleaning your stencils and tools, you just want to make sure to spray them down with water before they completely dry. And then go in with a cloth and they really wipe off nice and easily while they're still wet. If you let them dry, they're a lot harder to clean. So just do it right after you're done working. Now when it comes to this blending film, you'll wanna rip it off and wash it underneath a sink. Here I'm just gonna spray it with a little bit of water though because I don't have a sink nearby. And just wipe out any of that solar paste that's still inside of the blending tool. And this will make sure that next time you use it, it's not crusty. If you wipe all the paste out of the tool, then it'll still be usable by next time. Now I wanna have a colored border around this. So I'm just gonna go in with my Spring Assist Fisker scissors and just simply fussy cut this out. You totally don't need to do this if you wanna save a bit of time, but I wanna add it onto a different color. So I'm just gonna go in and fussy cut it. I leave a little bit of a white border so that I don't have to go into all of the details. I also really like these scissors because they spring back out at you so your hands won't get tired. And also sometimes when opening the scissors you get a little bit of a jagged line. So having this do that for you is really helpful to get a bit of a smoother cut. I want my colored card base to match this sort of teal colored balloon. So I'm gonna go in using my ink pad in clear skies and my dome foam blending tool again. And I've already got a stark white card base that I've cut and folded. And I'm just going to blend onto the surface to get my color. So just going in and I love these dome foam blending tools because they apply lots of ink down onto the surface. So you get that really solid color really quickly. And I'll just go around the edges and blend these out. And nobody will know that this card base wasn't a different color in the first place. I love doing this kind of hack to just color the edges and leave the inside white because you'll be covering it up. And it matches the project that we've already blended completely perfectly, which I love. Okay, so I'm just gonna add this flat to the card base and I'm gonna use a little bit of the Barely Arts liquid adhesive. I used to use tape runner for anything and everything. And I was kind of scared of liquid adhesive if I'm gonna be completely honest but the Barely Arts glue has kind of changed that for me. I really like this thin point nozzle and the glue seems to really adhere well as well. Stick things down and it gives you a little bit of time to kind of wiggle it around too. So I've got a little bit of time to just move this and center it completely perfectly on my card. And then once you're good, you can press it down and it'll stick really nicely and here. And I love this bottle because you just put this pin that comes with it right back into the tip and that seals it off perfectly. All right, and then for a sentiment, I really like these stenciled sentiments that we have on here. I think they were a great addition to the stenciling set and they give you lots of options. On this one, I really like this kind of big happy birthday sentiment. So I'm gonna go in using a bit of mint tape to mask off the other sentiments that we have in here and adhere this down onto the card so we can do our stenciling. And I want it to match these mid-tone blue balloons. So I'm going in using a bit of no diving, which is what we used earlier. And I'm gonna use these Detail Altenew blending brushes for the blending because these letters have lots of little tiny details in them. So hopefully this will get into all of those little areas. So I'll just go right in here and blend these out. And there's a lot of little tiny spaces. So I'm gonna do kind of this pouncing method to make sure that we don't lift any of 
those little areas up and then we get into all of the details of the stencil. These blending brushes are super handy for this small detail work and to make sure we don't go over the edge of the stencil. I really love them. And then once we're done, we'll go right in here, lift it off and check that out. It works perfectly with the card and it matches that mid-tone color beautifully. And also I love how many options and different font choices that you have in this set for the different stencils. You get tons of different options. So there is the finished card. I kept it pretty simple, but I love that stamping and stenciling technique, using those coordinating stencils and a bit of solar paste to add some shine and fun dimension onto today's card. This is the perfect masculine birthday card to send to any guy in your life. And like I said, changing up the color scheme will make it fit with every theme you want. All right, so next let's jump into some more non-traditional ways to use this collection other than just creating birthday cards with it. So I'm gonna go into one of the die sets here and this set is really cool because it's got some hot foil plates and some dies to go along with it. And I'm gonna pull out this circular shape which works really well with the coordinating stencil and you can see there's lots of things in here. Right now I'm gonna create a disco ball with it. So I'm gonna use this sort of portion of it but I'll show you some other ways to use it as well like you can make a candy and, and some really cool other add-ons. So I'm gonna start off simple by laying this onto a piece of black cardstock and cutting it out using a bit of mint masking tape to hold it in place while we run it through our die cutting machine. And by popular demand, we are back in business with some awkward die cutting. This is the segment of the show where we really awkwardly die cut together in the back of my studio as I just awkwardly stare at you while it runs slowly through the die cutting machine. <laughs> you guys missed this. All right, and that cuts out with the perfect little circle for our disco ball. So for our background and the mirror ball, we're going to be using a little bit of solar paste. I'm gonna use the colors Golden Hour, Cross My Heart, and Royal Flush. And these look absolutely beautiful on black cardstock. They're a bit more subtle than the lunar paste, but they'll give that really awesome shine that we want for our disco ball. So to create a palette, again, I'll just open up my paste and I'm going in using the paste tool set. So starting off using the palette knife, and then I'm going to apply this down onto the scraper tool. And that's sort of gonna act as our plastic palette which is really nice. And then we'll go right down the line into our next colors. So we'll go in using a bit of Cross My Heart. And last but not least, going in using a bit of Royal Flush. And all these colors are absolutely gorgeous. They're a little bit subtle at first. They're kind of white paste with that iridescence in it. And then when you tilt it in the light or if you apply it onto black cardstock, you get a really beautiful surprise. Okay, so let's start off with the background. I'm gonna do a bit of stenciling and I'm gonna use the Sunrays background stencil. Now this is a layering stencil set, but you don't need to use both layers. I'm just gonna end up using one layer for today's card. So I'm going in using the Sunrays layer one stencil. It's etched in the corner with what layer it is. I'll place my piece of black cardstock right down into my stamp wheel again. And this is a great surface to work on to hold down our stencils. Now, if you're using the Simon Hurley Create stencils, they actually have a coating on this matte side. So if you place it down on the matte side, it's going to remove that coating from the stencil. It's a little bit weird. So go in with the shinier side of the stencil and place that down onto the surface. That's gonna give you the best result. After lots of testing that I've done, that works the best. So just place down the matte side and then stick it down into the photopolymer mat. And also the glossier side is going to stick better to the photopolymer and give you such great results. Now for this, you could apply the paste down a little bit thicker using a palette knife if you want to, but because we created this palette and I want a little bit thinner of color, I'm just going to go in using that same blending sponge that I used earlier and apply my color down that way. Now with this stencil, I'm also going to sort of follow the lines that it's created in. So instead of doing a swirling motion and sort of pushing the paste underneath the stencil, I'm just going to go in lines and sort of follow the design really easily. So just apply a really thin amount onto our foam here. You don't wanna see a ton of peaks and a bunch on, of the paste on the foam, just enough to sort of cover it and give us a good color and then swipe this onto the surface. And you can really see already that when you go from the white paste and we bring it onto the surface, it creates that really beautiful color and that purple really comes to life. And then create a couple of the stripes using this beautiful red color. I love how it looks. It's just gorgeous on this black cardstock. But again, they're not like super opaque. So we're not getting like this super strong and rich color, which I didn't really want for this. I wanted it to just sort of have a glowing effect. And that's what the solar pastes really do. They give you that beautiful shine, but it's a little bit less intense. And then last but not least, I'll go in using a bit of the golden hour and just spread this onto the last couple of stripes. But I sort of want to blend this together. So I'll like blend it into a little bit of that purple on that stripe there 
and then I'll blend it into a little bit of that cross my heart. But I think it looks great, so I'm just going to lift this off of that photopolymer mat. You can see this sticks the stencils down really well. And we'll lift it right off the surface, and we get that beautifully stenciled background. I absolutely love how that looks. And we'll lift it off and set it to the side to dry. And you want to just make sure to clean up any of the excess paste that's on your mat before you move on to the next step and before it dries as well. So just really easily wipe that off the photopolymer and it'll be nice and sticky again to continue working. All right, then to stick down the mirror ball, I'm going to place down the piece that we die cut it out of first and then I'll pop right back in that circle die cut. This just gives us a little bit of a bigger surface area to work with so it's a little bit easier. And then we'll be able to line up that stencil right over top of the die cut. And it's just a little bit bigger than what we've die cut out. So it makes it really easy to line up. And then we can go right back in with our sponge and start blending some of that color down. So we'll start off with a little bit of that purple, blend it onto the surface. And we'll just do like little portions in different colors. So then I'll go back into that red. I'm using the same sponge. Doesn't really matter too much. And I'll add a little bit of red to one side. And then last but not least, I'll add in that yellow to the other side. And then we'll lift out that little die cut piece and check out how perfectly that's blended onto the surface. I love how crisp and clean those lines are. That's why you don't want to use too much of the paste, just enough to get that color on the surface. I'll set this off to the side and let it dry as well. All right, then if you want to use this excess paste, I'll just take this scraper tool that we used it with and I'm just going to go in and sort of wipe this onto a piece of black cardstock really super easily. There's quite a bit of paste there. So once we wiped it down, we can kind of smooth it out with the scraper tool and just sort of create a really easy background. And then once this dries, those colors will be even more visible on the surface there. And you're able to use this to sort of die cut out words or die cut out a piece of a background or even a balloon from this collection and use it on a different card. So that's a good way to just get more use out of your paste with some of the excess that you might have. And then I'm going to adhere this right down onto our top folding A2 card base. And I cut it down so there's a little bit of a white border all the way around it. And then to adhere the mirror ball down, I'm going to use my 3M foam tape. I love this large roll. I've actually used quite a bit of it. It's usually even bigger than this, but it's a great investment rather than buying a bunch of smaller rolls. And this is my favorite foam tape to use to mount things. It's really easily rippable and it's got a nice dimension without being too raised. So everything can still go through the mail quite nicely. So I'll add a little bit of foam tape down onto the surface of the mirror ball. And then we can add this right onto the front and center of our card right in the middle of those rays. When you look at it straight on, it doesn't look like too much color, but then when you tilt it in the light, that color is absolutely beautiful. And in real life, it's even more vibrant and stunning. I love that shine that it gives. It really gives that mirror and disco ball effect. All right, you guys, so I wanted an encouraging sentiment for this. So I went deep down into the archives and I went into the Nature Silhouette stamp set. This one is still available. I'll show in a future video how to use it even more. I love all these beautiful nature backgrounds. But there's a sentiment in here that says, keep shining, the world needs your light. And that is just so amazing. So I think I'm going to stamp that right below the disco ball. For the sentiment, I'm gonna do some heat embossing on black cardstock. So we'll use our anti-static powder tool to make sure nothing sticks where we don't want it to. And then I'll stamp it down using some clear sticky Versamark ink. And this sentiment and card is giving me major Taylor Swift vibes. I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan, if you didn't know. And one of my favorite songs on the Folklore album actually happened to be Mirrorball. Let me know in the comments down below if you had a favorite song from the Folklore album or what your favorite Taylor Swift song is. I'd love to hear down there and chat it out with you guys. So this card can definitely be sent to your friends who are also Taylor Swift fans. I think it's such a great and encouraging sentiment as well. For anybody who's not, it's just a beautiful card. All right, we'll throw over some white heat embossing powder, tap off the excess, and I lightly blow on it too to get rid of any of the excess powder. And then I'll heat set this till it's nice and bright white. And then for sentiments, I like to go a little bit closer and fussy cut them out, just leaving a little bit of a border around the sentiment. So rather than just leaving this on a rectangle of cardstock, I just take a little bit of excess time to go through and cut it out. And this makes it so that it just shows more of the card background and doesn't cover any of the detail up. And that finishes this card off beautifully. I love how nice and simple it is, but that solar paste really gives the most stunning effect. It's not too in your face, but it just gives you such a beautiful colored shine. I absolutely love it. And I love that this birthday set is able to create mirror balls and lots of different types of cards. And like I said, you could give it to a Taylor Swift fan or anybody really, because it's just beautiful and it's just a great encouraging sentiment. All right, for this last card, we're dipping back into the die set to create a more summer themed card. So I'm gonna use this grouping of three, and this is actually a hot foil plate and a die to cut it out. 
I'm gonna show how to stamp with hot foil plates, but you could do foiling with them as well to create that beautiful shiny and shimmery effect. And same thing, I'm gonna use the leaf die, and I'm also going to use the leaf hot foil plate for stamping. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna use these hot foil plates for stamping in today's video, because lots of people say they don't have a hot foiling machine, but this comes along in the die set. So I wanna show how to use it if you just wanna use your inks. So I'm gonna go in using my Simon Hurley Create inks. Here I'm using a little bit of Roar because we want these to look like oranges. And I'm just going to ink this up like I would a regular stamp. Now it's not gonna take the ink perfectly like a regular stamp would, but this isn't super solid. So I'm not too worried about it being absolutely perfect. Then we'll get our die cutting machine out and we'll create our sandwich. I'm using the A plate, the B plate, the E plate, which is this squishy rubberized mat to help do our stamping. Then I'll place down my piece of stark white cardstock and I'll place down that freshly inked hot foil plate right onto our stark white cardstock. And you don't want it to move or shift at all from there. And then I'll place down the hard gray plate right on top. This is using the universal plate system and then we'll run this right through the die cutting machine. And that little cushioned mat is going to help us to get a great stamped impression with the hot foil plate. You just wanna run it through nice and slowly. All right, and check that out. It created that outline really beautifully. It also sort of debosses the cardstock, so you get that beautiful texture there as well. If you want an even more solid impression, use an oil-based ink, sort of like an archival ink or something like that to help get a little bit more solid, but I think it turned out pretty nicely. For the green, I want more of a tone-on-tone -tone look, so I'm using library green right onto green cardstock, and I'm using this leaf plate, which is a little bit more solid. So I wanted to use the archival ink to make sure that it transfers and gives me an even more solid impression because that oil-based ink won't move or shift or bubble up on the plate as much as my water-based ink does. And then I'll follow the same sandwich as before, placing my cardstock onto that rubberized mat. And then I'll place down the inked up leaf hot foil plate, making sure that it doesn't move or shift and place that top gray plastic place on top and then run it through the decorating machine. And this one did rip the cardstock from pressure, but it did give a really beautiful impression. I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong with these plates. Hey friends, it's Simon from the next day. I'm editing this video currently, and I thought of a better way that you could do this without getting that kind of ripping effect or the crinkling of the cardstock. The rest of my craft room is a mess, but the real thing you're gonna wanna do is the platform base, the platform top, then that rubberized mat that we were doing earlier. Then again, you'll place your cardstock on top, You'll place your hot foil plate down, and then you'll use just one of your cutting plates. That seemed to work really well for me to get that great stamped result. It still debosses it a little bit, but not as much, but you don't get that horrible ripping or crinkling of the cardstock. Because these are thicker than the die cuts that you would usually use, I find that using a cutting plate, which is a little bit thinner, will kind of help account for that. So I hope this helps. Now back to the video. All right, and then I'll go in, and there's also a die that cuts these three out really easily. So I'll just go in with some mint tape, make sure that they're held down in place so that they don't shift at all and then we'll run this right through the die cutting machine to cut them out. And keep in mind, this can also be a cluster of balloons or those candies. The sky's really the limit with this set because you have all those stencils to coordinate. Okay, then to color in these oranges, again, I'm just gonna go into the stamp wheel because it makes it easy to stick down the cardstock to the surface and make sure that it doesn't move since we've already die cut it out and then go in with the stencil on top and stick it down. Now again, there's lots of options in this stencil. There's also this area too that has this little crossbar in between it. I'm gonna chop that out. I'm not exactly sure what it's for. There's probably a really good purpose, but I want a sort of solid balloon, so I'm gonna chop it out. Now, I always say, if that scares you, totally leave it in if you want to, and do maybe a circle die to make your own stencil. But if you feel like it's gonna be more useful for you, change up your supplies and cut different things if it makes it work better for you. And then I'm able to go in right on top, lay the stencil down into place and do my blending over top of these oranges and have a perfect circle for each one. I'm gonna do a lighter color orange on top of these. So I'm using a little bit of Guppy at first. I really love this light and bright orange color. And actually there's also all these little areas that I make sure to not ink. So I'm just gonna go in and mask them off. So then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna start at the bottom here, make it darker on the bottom and sort of work my way up and lighten it towards the top to give it a little bit of dimension and shading. And then I'll move this and do the same thing for each one of the oranges in the grouping. And then again, add tape as needed to make sure you don't ink the oranges you don't want to. Go in using a little bit more guppy and blend it up towards the top. All right, then we have all these different little dot patterns which you can add down to the oranges as well to add some shading. And sort of for the oranges, I feel like since to make that texture of the orange skin. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm just going to lay this down over the top of the oranges. I'm gonna go in using a little bit of traffic cone, which is this sort of corally color. And then again, using an Altenew blending brush to get into some of these details without having to tape everything down. 
These brushes, again, are super useful for little areas like this. If you don't wanna do taping and also to like avoid going into the other orange here, the little blending tool really comes in handy. And I love the texture that sort of adds to the orange. You can see for balloons, it would look like confetti or a different pattern, which is super fun. And I'll add more of that texture down to this side of the balloon and blend it out. Now the question is, does this need solar paste? And I think it does. It could use a little bit more texture and a bit of fun color shifting dimension as well. And it won't steal the show because it's not super bright, right? So I'm gonna go in using a little bit of overheated to match the orange color. I'm going to open this right up. And here we're gonna add this down using a palette knife to add a little bit more texture to the surface. So I'll go in with a different dot pattern. I'm actually gonna, gonna go in with this smaller one on the right here, which is gonna look a little bit different so that it'll kind of layer it up with the other design that we just did. And then I'll just go onto the surface and stencil this down using the palette knife. And again, the palette knife is gonna add more texture down to the surface and also give us nice control while we're applying those dots down. So we'll lift that off. You can see that gives it great texture. Then we'll line up the stencil with the next orange and without laying it down too far because we don't want it to touch the not dry solar paste on the other one. We're gonna lay it down a little bit and add some texture there. So you can see once it's dry, it takes on a little bit more of that orange color. And then when you tilt it in the light too, you can see that really beautiful orange shine. And I just love all those little texturized dots that are on the surface. It just adds tons of texture to these oranges. For the background, I want a fun and playful look that plays off of the dot that we just had in the orange. So I'm gonna use the Stippled Circles background stamp. This one is super fun and unique, and it's actually a peel apart. So you can peel apart these little individual circles, and you can also peel apart a row so you can create the design in different colors. But if we leave it all together, we can stamp this as one background stamp. So I want a little bit of a tone on tone look on my craft card base. So I'm using a little bit of Gur ink for a nice light brown on top of the craft color. And I'll just ink this up fully, really nicely on the surface. And then to stamp down background stamps, I'll just place this right down onto the surface. And to make sure that everything transfers, I go in with this little bit of a pressure tool and just press all around the surface. And this is going to stamp really beautifully then. And when we lift it off the surface, check out that great background that we have. I love those radiating circles with all of those little dots and details. It's so fun and playful. All right, then I'll add these right down on the front of the card with a little bit of foam tape to pop it up. And then to add the leaves, I'm gonna use a little bit of Barely Arts glue again, add some right down onto the surface, and then we'll place the leaves right into that glue. And just right at the center of one of these oranges to add a little bit of embellishment and detail to it. And we'll layer that up with both of them. I think that really ties it together and makes it no doubt that those are beautiful oranges. For the sentiment, I want to use the Zesty stamp set from Simon Hurley Create. I love this one, lots of great lemon images, or you can turn these into oranges, but it's got some really great sort of punny sentiments to go along with something like this. I'm gonna use that sentiment that says, you're my main squeeze. This is a great sentiment for a friendship card, but I'm breaking all the rules because I usually add a sentiment to the outside of the card. But today I wanted to keep it simple, just leave it like this. I don't think it needs a sentiment on the outside, but for the inside, when you open it up, I want there to be a sentiment. So I'm gonna use the you're my main squeeze and the Weeping Willow ink pad, which is a little bit of a darker brown, a nice chocolate rich brown color. And then we can stamp this right down into the top center of our card. And that is really great. So when they open that up, they'll read the You're My Main Squeeze, and then you can write your personalized note right underneath it. So a great way if you don't want to clutter up the front of your card with the sentiment to add it right on the inside so you still have something. All right, here's a look at the finished card. I absolutely love that we turned these balloons into oranges and that they give you lots of different varieties of images and different stenciling elements to really create lots of different looks for all seasons of cards. We finished it off with some solar paste to give lots of texture and dimension and a little bit of shine and that beautifully stamped background. And I love that the sentiment was on the inside here. We really broke all the rules, but I think it turned out so stunning in the end. So thank you guys so much for joining me as we jumped into my friend Carissa Wiley's collection and created lots of different cards. I really wanted to focus on the element that you can create more than just birthday cards, but there's even more things you can do with balloons and party elements with this set. So I'll link down below all the products and you can look at those product pages and see even more inspiration using them. Leave me a comment down below letting me know which card was your favorite and also down there check out the full supplies list if you want to look at anything that I used in today's video. Give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys very soon for another card making and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye.